Right guys, update, update, update. This is the one. This is the final one, hopefully. Uh, I'll set you up there. You've got a nice wide angle of the bike. As you can see, no pipes on it. Spent about two or three months now making all these pipes up, the little bits. The time has been taken up just in planning really, so I might do a few days on it, leave it a few days, do a few more days, leave it a few days, you get you get the idea. Uh, just been hammering away at it like that and then he's like, oh can you check front suspension, so right, I'm, I'm leaving it for a few days, drop out front end down, check all that, spend a few days on it, neaten it up, leave it for a week. Next question is, what well, suspension not back go up? He's like, yeah, so same thing, three days, three days. <laughs> Done all that, it's all here. We've just spent the last three days checking, double checking, putting a bracket on it. I knew that bracket was gonna be a pain in the backside. Uh, it was. Basically, because they had the suspension jacked up in here, the uh, swing arm jacked up, and that put the bracket smack bang on where the swing arm were, but I wanted the swing arm up so I could leave silencer in its perfect place while the bracket on while it's all there. That means I can drop back end down now and I know that it's it's been checked, it's been built with a back wheel up in the air. So we know that's totally fine now. I've double checked it, welded the bracket on, which has fixed it there at the back end. Everything after that, we can just wiggle it a bit on the rubber bush. I think, yeah, fix it with the back alley bracket. The back alley bracket will hold it in line. You'll be able to pull it off, pull it up, down. Just a little bit of play in it all. So we sorted all that out. Plan is now pull back end of it off front suspension back in it. I don't need to be lifting it up and down anymore because I'm not going to check it anymore. I've checked it about 10 times. No point checking it again. Uh, what I need to do now is do that, build it back up. And then I've got the pipes off here. You can see them. Uh, well up spring hooks on them. So I've marked them all up. They're still like this. I've took them off in two halves. So that's the right hand side of engine and the bottom pipe on back. Other sets obviously the other side. Uh, this I've marked them up here. So I'm going to put a spring hook across there. This one on front, I can't actually see no marks there. No, that's the one off the back. I tell you why, that's, they look near enough identical. So this one's on back and I'm going to weld all these on backs because otherwise they'd interfere. But I'm also going to weld the hooks on the back of the other tailpipe just so it hides them. I don't need all the springs on sure. If I can get them round the back, it'd be a lot neater. Bit harder to put on but a lot neater there's a big massive space there and it's flatter on the back on the front if you look at it from that angle it's a bit harder to get a spring in there because it's bending across so on there i've got a nice long flat section i can put it on so that's the plan right so i'll shut my gob might put my hat on might not put my hat on uh, these are the these are the things you have to think about <laughs> i'm missioning around a big chromers this morning to pick up some cliff homes that are a week and a half late he had a bit of trouble with his tank, he had a new cleaning tank or something and it's not... It cleaned better or something like that, I don't know, but the nickel won't nickel over the nickel, so they had to de-nickel them. <sighs> who knows, who knows. Uh, but yeah, we've done that, and then I went to Morrison's because I actually wanted a Valentine's meal deal thing. Oh my god, that where I work at Morrison's, so then I went to the next Morrison's. <laughs> Same problem there, I sacked it off, I've been driving around Morrison's. Uh, looking for a meal deal and it just got a bit too stressful. They didn't basically they didn't have it all in one section and you had to get a bit from here, a bit from there, a bit from oh, walk around Morrison's, lost my head, uh, walked out. Uh, so shut your mouth Ben, seat off, suspension in, new toolbox out, let's get moving.
Out there guys, that's the rubber bush. I made the rubber bush yesterday that's going to fasten the two tailpipes together onto the back of the peg. What I was just fiddling about then, the peg bolt's not long enough and basically I couldn't check any of them because the pegs were on stands and I needed to bolt it to the back of that peg. Uh, I started winding it out yesterday and then I was like, oh my god, I'm glad I didn't take that all the way out because it sat on pegs. Uh, so yeah, so I sat that idea off and basically they were a bit, they were that much thread, they were three mil thread sticking out the back. So I just hung that on there and I G-clamped it to rear set. Uh, just had a look on the bike and the bolts on the other side haven't been trimmed down because there's a massive gap between the back of the rear sets and the swinging arm. This side is tighter. Uh, offset swing arms, I think, uh, so you can run chain, it'll be something to do with that. So full bags are in the right place, but the swinging arm will be slightly different on one side to the other side. So yeah, see the bolt sticking out, a, sticking out a ton, it's sticking out twice as much. So I just thought, oh, I'll swap them round. Now it's not on the pegs. Swap the two bolts round. Hopefully there'll be enough thread now to get that on the back of it, plus a nut. And then what I'm going to do after that is I've also realised something while we're doing these videos is... The no music, having no music on, so it just sucks the soul out of the place. So my plan is, if I do a speeded up version, speeded up bit in my videos, so like now I'm gonna do the spring hooks after I put this on. I'll just go on, I'll go over there, flip radio on, and then save it, speed it up with no volume on, and then try and put a bit of, bit of music over the top, I don't know, just to make it a little bit more entertaining for yourselves, or just a little bit less mind-numbingly silent. If you want to watch it in silent, just yeah, turn that volume down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my plan. Just let's have a look at this and then I'll turn it maybe one, I reckon. See if we can get that muscle back of there first. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. I've got enough. Get that on there. We should, have spotted that, we should have known that before putting the bike onto the stand. If I'd have swapped that bolt on and sat off it, that would have made things a lot easier. Instead of thinking about it, last minute kind of thing. And that's that's going to be grand there, I think. Probably biggest problem with that kind of spanner on it again. But yeah, that just wants to sit there until, until I get all pipes on, I think. What size is that going to be? Is that 18? It's a 17. Right, rubber bushes are go. It's lovely on back of there. That nut fits on the back nicely. Plan is, I'll probably make a quick brew. I'll pause you up, make a quick brew. What's my plan? Oh, I'm going to tack these hooks on, so we'll just get you a better position on this bar where I'm going to do all the rest at work. Just spin camera across, cut scene, start again. I'll be back. Right, guys, let's do it. I'm going to drag gas bottles over, get some prepping done. Uh, basically, I need to whip the grinder out, pull the extension lead over here, whip grinder out. Grind, probably just take a bit of the black scale off where I'm going to braise these on. Mainly because they're, they're really horrible. You should take the black scale off. Uh, but they're also really tricky. You just have to throw a little bit of braise on. That's all you need to get them to stick on. Uh, so you don't want it to be dirty because the braise will go everywhere. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that. I've got this to show you before I go. This is a little tin. It, 
when I took over the place, it was sat on back bench. Uh, back bench were in a total different place. It was just caked in grinding dust, and it had been used as a man box in a way. It had like you know just like bits of welding tips in there. It were mainly 90% grinding dust still, but it just had some little bits in there that you'd want to keep safe. Nothing, nothing of importance. I put them into a different man tray. Uh, my uncle come down one weekend and he said, oh, I recognise that. We used to make them at engineering school when they were at college. Uh, and he, read, he said, your dad will have made it or your uncle Paul. And I said, well, I've got two. And he says, oh, well, you've got both of them then. You've got your dad's and your uncle Paul's. I know when my dad set this place up, my uncle Paul gave him all of his engineers, because he weren't engineering my uncle Paul or he were working for some, someone. So a lot of the stuff that he collected up from college and stuff, he give all that to dad when he was setting up so dad had enough stuff to settle with like, that's what happens when you set up i've got a load of people's stuff where friends and family just go oh benny i've got a lot of old spanners you can have them if you want that kind of thing you end up with too much i've got like a box full of old spanners that we don't use anymore i just i've just got them just, i don't know what to do i'm not going to scrap them they've been nice i built a fire and used one as an handle that kind of thing uh, and they might come in handy one day, there's a lot of vintage sizes in there. So anyway, yeah, this one. I went and looked for the other one, I found the other one, I thought it were over there in Dad's tool chest, so I thought that one were Dad's. Until the day I come to clean this up and repurpose it. Basically, you won't be able to see it, and no way in a million years you're going to be able to see that. Oh, you might be able to see it. Which end does it start? But yeah, scribed in there, it says Ray Ardman, or R Ardman. That's an R at the start and then Ardman going across it. It's as good as you're gonna get it, that, I think. Anyway, I've repurposed it, and look what's in it. I just fill it up with exhaust springs. So I've got all them ready to go. So, just get these cleaned up, grab gas bottles out, mix up some flux. I've marked on everywhere where I want them, apart from one, which I'm still trying to find a black marker pen. That's all I've been doing. I've just I've had a bit of a brew and I've wandered around, cleaned some bits up. So it doesn't look like I've cleaned up, but I've put some bits away. And while I were doing it, I was like, I'll find that marker pen, and I've not found it yet. So it might mean might mean I have to go back into the bag and get another marker pen out. But yeah, I'll do all that. We'll get some stuff cracking. We'll be uh, if I walk past you that way, I'm going switching radio on, and then we'll go speed it up. Ah, oh, thank marker pen. There's my cupboard. Turn them on. Uh, get rid of that. You always got to get rid of them welding helmets, expensive things, aren't they? Uh, ruler out. Mark this one. Just while I'm here. I couldn't get the ruler into the gap, and you know you can't see me, but... Couldn't get, the pipes were too tight underneath and I couldn't get a ruler in. Uh, so I just marked with the straight line of it, and then I thought, alright, I'll take it off and I'll mark it when it's off. The distance between the... You need to work out the distance between the two spring hooks, so that the springs stay tight. And so they're all the same, no good having like one that's slack, one that's tight. Just make sure they're all the distances the same. Uh, flux next. Where my little flux draw? I need a fair bit of that. Not, not too much, but a fair bit. Mix that up with some hot, get that out. Get grinder. Right, we're going to speed up. I'm going to get grinder out. I'm going to turn radio on. I'll be back.
Right guys, done. That's the last one. I've not put it in the water. Should have put it in the water. It just gets a bit of the flux off. Gets a bit of the flux off while it's still hot. It were hot enough that uh, yeah, it nearly burnt my fingers after just burning my fingers with a rod as well. I spun the rod round in my hand and it clipped my little finger. Oh, so, yeah, spring hooks on all both ends of them. Both ends of everything, really, now. So I've got a pile of bits there. Battery's running low. Uh, so what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick you on charge. Uh, that haircut still bodge you. Stick you on charge. Uh, stick you on charge. Oh, and then I'm going to get blowtorch out, big blowtorch. My plan is, like, see if I can blow some of them. Do you know the junctions, how they were still normal steel? Uh, that colour. On the other side now, they've gone all mucky where I've brazed them. Heat's gone down there, heat's gone round here. So they don't look that nice. So my plan is, just see if I can gloss over them with torch and get them to go as blue as the headers. So I'll do that while you're charging up. Uh, heat them up, let them cool down. Let's then try them on the bike. So when the battery charges back up, we'll get you up close. Start spring, 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 spring. Yeah, that's my favourite bit is when you start springing it together. So we're not far off. Give you a bit of focus. I'll be back soon. Let's do some springing. <laughs> 